Oh, this is marvellous. This is a wonderful book I've just received from Steve Nichols, one of my puzzle friends. Where he finds this, I don't know. Have you ever come across this one? It's the world's worst ever alphabet book. P is per pterodactyle with a T. Very strange, but it's a silent P, you see. Very odd. And the back, for instance, is T. Well, tsunami? No, it's a tsunami it's pronounced. So it's just the English language being quirky. And it's got every one of the words of the alphabet, all with mispronunciation due to the quirks of the English language. As for aisles, like shopping aisles, of course, but it's pronounced with the letter I, but it's spelt with the A. So, look at this, extraordinary. Some of them are superb. This is one, a strange one, too. F is not for photo or phony and things, because it's got a soft P which isn't pronounced. It's pronounced with F sound. So, you can see how it'd be a wonderful confusion for children to see things like this, where the words are exactly not as they're written, which is, makes life very, very enjoyable. And one of my favourites back here, that's a clever one too, because that actually forms the letter V, which is the a, 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 a Roman numeral five. So I've really had a lot of fun making fun of alphabet books. And that's a charming one, because that looks like a Y when it's upside down like that. And it's some... Um, well, anyway, you've got the idea. It's a very, very clever little book, the like of which I've never come across before. So, the world's worst ever is a theme I want to look for in my collection. So, I thanks a lot, Steve. That's a, an amazing one. Here's a couple of other things which are sent, given to me by a friend, which he doesn't know what they're for. So, I call them what's it, and he calls them what's it. And I've got to work out, show it to a number of people, and perhaps yourselves, what's it used for. It's quite heavy, it's metal, it's got a nice base to it. It's got this funny little lid, I feel, and this wonderful thing like, like one of those shells you see on, on, on the beach. I suppose you could put flowers on it, and those would hold the stems sticking out, there's water inside perhaps, or, or is it for sweets, or I don't know what it is. So, it's a mystery to me, and if anyone's seen anything like that before, let me know. Okay. And another one he gave me is this one here, it's got some very fiendish looking arrangements for hanging out somehow, I'm not sure what it is, and this little bit here spins around very nicely. But what's that for? What's all this peculiar form of um, paraphernalia on the back there to make it stand up with the rods and things? I can't make it out at all. It's still something that's baffling me. But I've got to show it to a lot of my puzzle friends. Here's something I was familiar with, and uh, I think I've lost mine at the moment. It's a very, very clever idea, this. It's a uh, it's a, it's a little travelling corkscrew, which you take out like that, you take the corkscrew and you turn it sideways like that, you put this back on again, and would you believe you've got a very good functioning, I've tried it several times, functioning corkscrew for taking out corks from bottles. And when you finish with it, you pack it up again. And it's such a clever idea that that thing can just slip inside. There's a very sharp point, so you don't want to have that damaging you. And there it is ready to put back in the pocket or in the suitcase. I've also been given one of these, which is a bizarre thing. This is a Christmas present. It's Monopoly with chocolate pieces on it. Well, chocolate money, actually. There's the actual pieces. Here's the well-known ball of Monopoly, which I used to play a lot as a child, incidentally. I've much enjoyed it. And then you're supposed to play with the pieces, and the money itself is Monopoly money, of course. And this, this, this is the money when you pass go and when you go, etc, etc. These are all £10 or $10 or something. Once you use them up, well, that's it. You can't play the game anymore. Well, you could. You could just get yourself another set of money things. But it's a chocolate Monopoly set, which I think is a very nice little idea, which I haven't seen before. So, very pleased to have that as well. Nice. So many things that you can admire after the festival season's over, and you can have a go with playing with and then showing the friends and in these cases asking them what they're for. The last item is a brilliant one from the same Steve who gave me that book. It needs a lamp though to make it work. So I'll put a lamp on. And this is what they call lithophanes and Steve made these on his computer. You can do it nowadays. And there's nothing much to see in them. It's very hard to make out what they are. 
because normally you hold them up for the light. Well, that's what you do with this, but something magical happens, which I've never seen before, and I'm absolutely bowled over by it. When you hold it up to the light like that, and suddenly the picture appears, and it's, oh, he's taking it off our website. There's a picture of me showing balloons and things, I think it is. So, isn't that clever, though? It must be summertime sometime, because I'm wearing a, a light short sleeve shirt. But the colour is astonishing. I've never seen that with elizophane before. It's normally just shades of grey, isn't it? And the other one also would be shades of grey, but no, he's managed to get me in full colour. That's a picture of me. I know I should look through my records and see when I was showing those extraordinary spectacles with lots and lots of um, dark glasses attachments to it, etc. So two elizophanes was a big surprise when I picked them up because I suddenly saw colour for the first time and that was magical when I've seen that. I've got quite a few lissophanes made of chocolate and various things, but ones which are coloured, never seen them before. So a big thank you to Steve for identifying them and actually manufacturing these. He made them at home on a, one of these new computers which creates depth and that's what you need here. So these are wonderful things I've acquired over this very busy festive season and I'm very, very pleased to be able to have and show people all of them.